Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Artem Prospevich, and today I have only 15 minutes to talk. So that's actually a presentation was prepared for a full size of presentation. Uh, but OK, we don't have a lot of time to speak about. Uh, and uh, let's move to the directly to the presentation. Just a few words about me. Uh, more than I have more than 12 years of programming experience, and since April 2012, I worked for Vimint and currently took the position of solution architect. Uh, I think more than 11 years of experience with Sitecore, and probably started working with Sitecore since version 6.5 or something like that. And I was uh, awarded as Sitecore Technology MVP four or five times in a row. And uh, Today's presentation called as uh, one click deployment to the Kubernetes. Uh, why actually we I have prepared the presentation? Because for a few last years, I took a lot of work done related to DevOps activities. And uh, primarily all of them was related to the Kubernetes. And uh, currently I have deployed around six uh, Kubernetes environments with Sitecore. And uh, the good news here that Sitecore officially supports deployments of the Kubernetes and uh, provide all uh, manifests, all files that are required to run Sitecore there. And uh, also Sitecore provides a good guide that we can go through and uh, actually get, get uh, our environment running. And uh, if we will download this guide and uh, go through that, it actually takes not even hours. It can take, take days uh, for the first time. And uh, because there are a lot of manual work that you have to do, you have to serialize, or you have to uh, prepare some certificates. You need to encode your license. You have to set up set uh, secrets manually and directly in the files, which is not secure, uh, secure but uh, that's Everything which is described, pretty good described in the guide. And uh, when you will do that, finally, you will get this kind of environment that we can see on the screen. Uh, uh, that's high level architecture, uh, which I prepared just to provide some understanding of what you will get. And uh, we have AJ Kubernetes. Uh, is there a point or no? Uh, on top of our architecture, we have Azure Kubernetes services, uh, which has uh, some uh, work running, uh, let's say pods. Uh, the pod actually in Kubernetes terminology is the smallest entity uh, in our cluster. So actually the pod represents our application running in Kubernetes, and uh, each pod has uh, image behind. Uh, First of all, we will have some ingress controller running. We will have our CD, ID, identity, and the CM server running, which you present by pods. Uh, we will have some external services we can connect to the third party, or we also can run that kind of SQL, Redis, and Solar services running inside of the Kubernetes as well. But uh, that will work for non-production environments, not for production. Uh, that's highly recommended to use third parties uh, to provide uh, higher availability. And don't lose your data in case of any issues happen with the cluster itself. So uh, once we run it in Azure, we have of course Azure Active Directory in, involved in the process, and uh, we use our Azure account to connect to the cluster, uh, of course, from the console. Uh, the kubectl CLI is used to connect to the cluster, and we can reach all data running in Kubernetes through, the, uh, through this tool. And actually, uh, some external tools, tools also available to run to work with the Kubernetes with visual uh, interface that uh, make it easy, but uh, the, the, the most common way to work with Kubernetes is CLI. 
Uh, we have some secure container register which we can use to pull and which we use to pull images provided by Sitecore. But uh, of course, that, that images do not have any custom code. Uh, so all traffic, even if it is editors or site visitors, goes directly to the cluster to the ingress controller. So you have uh, some IP address assigned to, to, to your cluster. Then you configure your DNS provider, DNS records, and point your host name directly to the cluster. So uh, that will work, but that's not represent the uh, real project because, uh, of course, it is not secure because you store your secrets in the files. So you have to push these files to the repository and that everybody can reach your secrets. Uh, then you have to specify the manifest for separate environments separately. So because everything represented by files. And uh, if you want to have the separate settings uh, for different environments, you have to make a copy of the files and then deploy them from that. Or maybe in, in, in case of uh, some CICD processes, you can specify some tokens inside of your file manifests and then replace it on the deployment uh, stage. But uh, that's not really uh, useful. Uh, if you want to make this project working for our clients, then we anyway have to specify some CI/CD process because we have to build our custom images with our code. But uh, of course, we cannot push them to the site core, repo site core container registry, and we have to specify, uh, we have to use some public or private container registry. It is up to, and this is up to clients. Uh, so it can be Azure container registry, it also be can be, for example, GitHub container register that also can be, which I actually use on that project. Uh, then in original, we don't have any rendering uh, and rendering application because uh, the setup that set core provided is about not only about the headless, that's standard set core XM, or in my case, this is XM, it also can be XP. Topology, but uh, for the last years, the almost all projects becomes headless, and we want to run uh, our Node.js or Vue.js, let's say, our front-end application somewhere in the our cluster, or we also have an option to run it in Versal or any other uh, services that we can use to run our Node uh, Node.js application. So uh, in that way, it it it, uh, it looks more realistic in case of our deployment and uh, the product that pro environment that you deploy for our uh, clients. Um, a few words about uh, manifest Kubernetes manifest. This is the YAML files provided for Sitecore. It's provided by uh, Sitecore itself, and we then just adjust it for our needs. Uh, in general, this is uh, YAML files with uh, some predefined structure. Uh, the, the very important part property here is a kind which defines which uh, type of object we try to run or deploy to the Kubernetes. Uh, the pod represents actually the application that we run. And uh, so we can see that all values, all parameters are uh, defined in that files. In the, uh, for example, client ID or the name of the of or the name of the resource in that case service account or namespace that they're going to deploy. Uh, let's say this is hard coded. So because uh, you have to specify it on on a stage when you define these files, or maybe you can, as I said before, you can specify some tokens here and rewrite the values on the deployment time. But uh, for Kubernetes world. We have some uh, stuff that can make it easy, uh, and there is Helm comes to us, which actually prepare uh, the Kubernetes manifests for us, but we separate uh, uh, templates and the values in a different way. So 
we have templates for our uh, manifest and we have separately stored uh, a file with our values or we can specify values on the runtime or on the installation time. Uh, let's see the same service account on the previous screen. Uh, we use some uh, uh, variables here instead of specifying the, val the values itself. Then uh, we define some values files uh, it is called values and we can specify any number of values files for example we can have the base one and then with uh, the second values files we can rewrite the values for example we have base then we have one values file for our dev environment and other values files for qa and when we just stop our helm chart we specify uh, the list of values files that should be applied for our installation and uh, Another option, how we can specify the values, we can uh, send them to the uh, our Helm chart in the in the stage when we install that Helm chart. So, which means, uh, for example, in terms of our CI/CD process, when I do deployment, uh, I already got some values from previous steps, and then I can send them to the to the to the main chart, uh, which will be used to specify the values for our environment. Uh, I don't have time to talk a bit more about the helm and uh, explain how it works in details. I just want to bring us to the, to the main idea of the presentation. And uh, this is the more realistic and uh, production environment running Kubernetes. And, different, and there is a few uh, differences with the previous diagram that uh, I was so. The main uh, idea that uh, we use Helm chart to deploy our application. We don't directly say uh, our cluster which images to push. We just install Helm chart, which is already defined the images and the version of images that need to be pulled from our container registry. Also, we have Azure front door uh, on top of our behind our cluster, which protect us from some hack attacks or something like that. Uh, we specify the static IP address for our cluster because uh, if we don't use static, a static IP address, so then when cluster is shut down and then run again, the IP will be changed, which makes it a bit difficult to uh, route traffic to your cluster in terms of using uh, DNS every time you need to update your DNS records. Uh, finally, we have rendering here. Uh, then there is specified another set type of services, which is, uh, for example, cert manager, because if you will set up your set core set instance using the guide provided by site core, you have to specify, you have to generate your uh, your certificate uh, locally. Uh, it will be like self signature signed certificate, but for well, real real production. Real in production environments, we generated Kubernetes generated certificates for us, and uh, in my case, I use Cloudflare to to sign that certificate. So my certificate is both uh, in Cloudflare, but doesn't matter. So you just need to specify some records in your DNS, and then you will be able to use the set manager. You will be able to sign it and make them trusted. So then. Uh, all secrets should be stored somewhere, but not in the files. In my case, I use the Azure Key Vault uh, to store my secrets and the uh, secret store CSI driver used by Kubernetes to pull the images from the Key Vault and store them inside the cluster. And uh, once you have updated here, in a few seconds, they become updated in Kubernetes. And uh, also, we have to do some monitoring and the health check of our cluster uh, in case production work. And uh, probably this is the main difference with the image that we saw before. And uh, uh, what actually I provide, uh, I have done some work to make easy my 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 other deployments, and they prepare for us uh, Helm charts for our site core instances, and uh, I prepare some pipelines that can be used by another community to deploy site core to the Kubernetes. It does not represent the, the, the diagram that we see now. It represents the environment that can be deployed just 
reusing my CI CD pipelines. So uh, in one click, actually. So uh, I don't edit some monitoring tools yet, and I don't edit uh, Azure Form door on top of uh, behind of our cluster. And uh, this part should be automated yet, but uh, everything else will be set up just from scratch. And uh, there is a few things that uh, we will solve using my pipelines. This is, uh, first of all, provision and configure Azure infrastructure. So you don't need to set up some networks and stuff, something like that. You only need to create uh, the Kubernetes cluster with only two nodes added. Uh, one node is Linux node, which is a master node for the each Kubernetes cluster. You cannot run Kubernetes without that. And for site core, we required second node, which is Windows node, where we actually run all our stuff. Uh, with the pipeline that I prepared, we improved our certificate management because the certificates will be created automatically. And of course, in my case, we use the Cloudflare, but uh, the provider can be changed. Uh, just I use the cert manager, which is a third party tool, and it has like uh, pretty good uh, documentation and uh, the right options how we can sign your certificates. Uh, we improve the secrets management because we move it to the Azure SQL. Uh, we simplify and optimize our CICD process uh, because you can just uh, pull my repository and uh, use it. And uh, uh, also, I, there is uh, I, I built a new image with the content, with, with the items that are serialized using set core serialization, and then I build the scripts that uh, deploy this image to the Kubernetes and the run synchronization of content automatically within the deployment. So you don't need uh, to run any connection from the pipelines to your uh, to your cluster and initiate the serialization. It will happen automatically within the images. Um, <clears throat> I think the next slide is almost uh, lost. Uh, uh, there is a few prerequisites that uh, need to be created before you can use the pipeline. So first of all, you have to be able to use some subscription and resource group in Azure. Uh, we need to configure Azure service principle and that allow GitHub to communicate with your Azure resource group and create their resources. Uh, you need to create a uh, key vault just create empty key vault. You don't need to configure any network there. So, and uh, empty Azure uh, EKS, uh, Azure Kubernetes cluster uh, with Windows Node, as I said before, you need to have a GitHub Pro account. You can use uh, just the standard GitHub account, but repository should be public to be able to use all power of the workflows provided by GitHub. But if you want to have uh, like a private one, so you need to have the pro because uh, only pro account allow you to have environments, different environments defined for your deployments using in, in workflows. And the uh, Cloudflare account, this is something specific for, for my case because uh, I use it to sign my certificates. And now I want to show quickly what I have prepared for us. Uh, let's uh, okay, there is three repositories in uh, uh, in uh, GitHub, and first of all, this is the images. Okay, a good option because I don't. Okay, I have to look. Okay, uh, this is we have three repositories: images, uh, Helm charts, and uh, DevOps. In images repository, we have a list of uh, roles and uh, Docker files prepared for them because uh, in my demo that I use, uh, as a result of execution of deployment, we will get the whole environment running. Even the rendering uh, will be used the next JS application, and we will, in case if uh, if I will not show it now because I don't have time, but uh, actually this is the fully work environment will be deployed and uh, initiated. 
So uh, there is CMCD ID, the policy standard uh, Docker files that we use with every uh, Docker environment because uh, I created them because I have to add some services like headless uh, SXA to my environment. So then, and this is the items. Uh, if somebody will be interested in, uh, you can look at this document file and see how I prepare the image to set up uh, items using some Kubernetes jobs. Uh, and rendering, this is the image that built a Next.js application, or oh, this is the document file and the Next.js application itself, which finally be, uh, Allowed it to the image and then run in Kubernetes and connect to the site core. Uh, <clears throat> so also you can find uh, I don't see actions here, and there is a pipelines which is used to build images and they these images are pushed to the GitHub repository which is also open and the public. I will send you the I will show the links to this uh, repository contained to oh sorry to the container registry. So then we have a Helm charts. Uh, we have a list of charts here. We have, first of all, we have the cluster unit uh, Helm chart, which installs all secrets, uh, installs this uh, CSI, CSI driver to pull images from the key vault, and then initiate all configs that required for our cluster prepared to run site code there. Then we have the second Helm chart, which is Cert Manager. It's installed the Cert Manager and configure it to pull it to pull uh, secrets from Cloudflare. And if you want to use your custom provider or any other provider, you we just need to adjust the that Helm chart. Uh, just to be clear, it is represent some. Uh, it uses external Helm chart, but uh, we adjust it with additional templates here and the uh, values that we overwrite. Uh, so we have Helm charts for CD, CM server and identity server, as well as the, for the rendering, and uh, they can be used alone. So you can just deploy CM, CD server, for example, if you need. Uh, or we also have uh, Sitecore XM1 Helm chart, which accumulate all of them in one. And uh, for example, if you will look here, we can see the independencies that we have uh, CD, CM, ID, and rendering host uh, running within that Helm chart. And uh, also there is XM1 init, which is used init images to populate the databases in the, our solar indexes within our instance. So all of them are represent the same structure as uh, we have in document provided by Sitecore, but all of them are built in the Helm, and you can just click one command to install them and pass required parameters. Uh, of course, I will extend the README uh, when I will have time for that. And the last repository that I want to show uh, represent the pipelines itself. Uh, there is a list of parameters that you have to create in your GitHub account. Uh, this is the secrets. And they all are used to connect to the cluster, or they used to specify the name of resources that we will create. But actually, if we will look at the actions, there is two pipelines, two main pipelines. And uh, first of all, this is provision infrastructure. This is pipeline, which is uh, uh, populate all data required and uh, configure our Azure resource group, our Azure Kubernetes cluster, and uh, connect each other. So, for example, we need to specify the, the networks between uh, key vault and the cluster to, to, to allow to allow Kubernetes cluster pull secrets from key vault, for example. So that all this done with that pipeline. And finally, it just installs. Yeah, there's some PowerShell, which do some magic. But finally, we just install uh, Helm charts uh, using uh, some sub, sub workflow. You just need to specify where we install the Helm chart, specify the parameter that you want to pass to this Helm chart, and that's probably it. So the second pipeline is uh, deploy Sitecore, uh, which do 
install some uh, do install the site core itself. So when you want to deploy your custom code and when you will deploy your custom code, you will just rerun that image, rerun that workflow, just updating your Helm charts actual version of images that you want to push to the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, probably that's it. That was a demo. And uh, this is a list of links that you can uh, visit and see in details what actually available. And uh, I think my time is gone. And thank you for attention.